lectures on navigating the supply chain crisis. My guest is Rebecca Jasper, Director of Global Supply Chain with Minnesota Rubber and Plastics. Hello, Rebecca. How are you? Great. Thanks Hi, very Robert. much. Thanks very much for being with me. So just a quick uh, you know, assessment. Everybody is suffering so much from shortages of key materials right now and congestion. Just uh, how are supplies of plastic and rubber holding up? We're doing fantastic. We're meeting our customers' needs, needs of 25 to 30% increase. And we've just broken ground on our new innovation center out front that's going to be completed in March. And so it's been a great year. For Minnesota rubber and plastic. Well, that's good news for you. You're an anomaly in that respect that you're able to continue serving your customers with adequate supplies of, a, of, of absolutely critical, uh, critical raw materials and the like. So we're here today for you to give me some tips for manufacturers on navigating the supply chain crisis. And I believe you said you had seven. Is that correct? I do. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can get through all of those in the short term okay. we have available. What would be the first one? are experiencing price increases. And so how do we address those as those come across our emails every day? And so my first tip is don't sweat the small stuff. Mm. Look at what the total cost of ownership is and understand, okay, is this one I'm going to (laughs) fight? And so if you can, then Mm -hmm. uh, look to see if possibly could you make it for the next PO or extend it out or Could you extend the date of the increase if it can't be on the next PO? Or could you change the break quantities, the the total quantity that you're purchasing to a higher volume level? Because we are experiencing so much increased demand that we could possibly do that to mitigate some of those price increases. So I'm recommending don't sweat the small stuff and tackle the big things. Excellent. Thanks for that. Okay. Number two. Number two, choose the right communication tool. I can't tell you how important this is. Uh, So let's say you're troubleshooting um, a big issue. And the best scenario is to get everybody in the supply chain on the call. And the one example that we had was during this call where we were troubleshooting the issue, we learned that our supplier had another manufacturing site overseas that made the same material and they weren't experiencing the same shortages that we were here in the US. And so then we were able to, you know, do the total cost analysis of what those costs would be with tariffs, et cetera, and still uh, bring it in to meet our customer needs. So that is one, uh, method where you really want to make sure all the people are on the phone. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay. Number three. Yeah. So I I do want to say a little bit about uh, choosing the right communication tool. I just want to follow up with that. Okay. We're still, okay. For for, you definitely want to use text messages and WeChat and uh, WhatsApp for international suppliers and for domestic suppliers when you've got a real quick answer that you need. And so my suppliers have been awesome in being able to just give me those quick answers to say, okay, what's the status of this? Is it shipping? You know, real-time information so that we can get that communication back to our customers. Mm -hmm. And so that's the best way. And don't wait for an email. An email really should be for large communications to a wide audience where you're summarizing, making it really clear about what what the communication is and maybe updating with a project plan or something like that. So make sure that you're not using emails or text or, or video conferencing in the wrong way for the wrong purpose. So easy for emails to get lost in the flood of emails that we deal with every day. We just miss things. We go to spam, whatever. So that's a good one. Okay. I'm sorry to cut you off on that second point there. That (laughs) was all part of number two, right? Yes. Okay. So let's get on to number three then. Number three is my favorite. A racy chart. We use this in consulting where you have roles um, that are defined by either you're, you're responsible, you're accountable, you're consulted or you're informed. And so when we get or learn of a shortage that's impacting a customer, the first thing we do is um, put it into a spreadsheet and start driving actions. Mm 
And so make sure that the people who are responsible are getting it done. If they're not, then they're escalating it to the accountable person and that you're including people who need to be consulted. So make sure that the right engineering team or the right uh, process manufacturing engineering person is involved in the decision. And then all the right people are also informed of the decisions. So pulling that that roles and responsibilities right into the spreadsheet so that you can manage the project immediately, start driving actions and start moving forward as soon as possible. Okay, good one. Uh, Number four. Be ready, be agile, be ready to look for alternatives and backup options. So for most of my large OEM customers, whether it's in the medical area or if it's in automotive, have very strict requirements for finding alternatives and requires a very sophisticated testing and life testing uh, systems. But we are ready. Say, you tell me the go ahead customer and we're going to find you alternatives. And so we're on your perspective. We're on with our AMG group to find those alternatives and then follow through on all those testing requirements. So we are ready and agile to be able to get that for the customer. All right, good one. Number five. So for us, I want to be the example of visibility I want to see in the world. So we are looking at additional visibility tools and quoting tools right now because so many people have dropped out of the workforce. We have one parent staying at home with children because of the high cost of, of childcare, or we have boomers that are dropping out and don't want to deal with this new world anymore. And so the, the amount of people that we've got are, is limited. So we are looking at alternative um, quoting tools and other, other tools to use. But at the same time, we want to provide visibility to everyone. And sometimes it's get it, giving access to customer service to our third-party logistics provider uh, tool so that they can quickly look when a customer needs to know where their shipment is, they can quickly look it up and understand where it is. Mm-hmm. But also to summarize, summarize, summarize. So when somebody has a question, don't just forward some answers, summarize it, make it sense to the person who is asking the question. And so that it, if it goes to the customer, that it makes sense to them. Try not to use acronyms, trying to speak in terms of their part numbers and not ours. And so that's uh, where we wanna be the visibility to the entire supply chain. So whether that's tools or just communicating to them, that's where we're gonna do that. Yeah, I, I like that one a lot. Uh, are we at number six? Is that where we are? Yeah, number six is really kind of merging into that is finding the digital solutions to to quoting and to being real time to our customers, getting quicker answers to them. And so uh, so it, it, it just marries right into those digital solutions. OK. And then finally, our finally, our number last seven. Minute. Look outside the United States. So material shortages ebb and flow. And so we might be experiencing some shortages in the US, but the the Europe isn't or China isn't or different areas of the world are experiencing shortages in different ways and at different times. So take advantage of those aberrations and um, look, of course, you're gonna go and calculate the total cost of ownership but you, but there are opportunities to find uh, manufacturing of the same material overseas. And so be ready to do that. Well, this is some great advice, not only for getting through the current supply chain crisis, but preparing for the next one. Uh, so it, it's a good way for companies to start thinking about what's going to happen in the future, because we're always going to have supply chain disruptions. Yes. And they're often going to be in some very critical components and materials, such as those that you guys produce. Uh, So that is wonderful, Uh, Rebecca Jasper of Minnesota Rubber and Plastics. Thank you for those great tips on how companies can survive in very difficult times. And great to hear that you folks are doing well as well in the midst of all this crisis. But thanks so much for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.